All right. Well, I want to spend some time. You've gotten to work with uh, some of the most well-renowned uh, leaders in the world, and I kind of want to deconstruct what makes them. And we can start with, and this relates to your book, 5 a.m. Club, how we start our day, and then the characteristics that make up these great leaders. But then I also want to talk about what are the biggest leaders in the world plagued by? Where are their challenges come from? Because clearly, if they're working with you, there's things they need to work on. And so I kind of want to deconstruct what an amazing leader looks like in your eyes. I know they come in all shapes and forms. So, you know, maybe let's just sure. start with the beginning of the day. So, yes, I wrote a book a few years ago called The 5 a.m. Club. One of the underlying philosophies is, is the Spartan credo. Sweat more, in, sweat more in training and you'll bleed less in war. And in many ways, we're in a war right now. We're in a war against the plague. We're in a war against negativity. We're in a war against distraction. We're in a war against apathy. We're in a war against average. So starting your day, the way you begin your day dramatically sets up the way your day unfolds. And what too many good souls do, it's not judgment, just reporting, but they wake up and they check their email. They wake up and they check their social media feeds. They wake up and they watch the news. They wake up and they distract themselves in so many different ways. What I teach in that book is, you know, University College London teaches us to take 66 days of practicing a new skill until you reach a point of automaticity. And the automaticity point, Chris, is the point at which it's easier to do the new skill than not to do the new skill. So what I'm evangelizing is you get up at 5 a.m. for 66 days, approximately. Mm -hmm. And through the power of the human gift of neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the brain to grow and to adapt, you will be able to get up at 5 a.m. easily and automatically. Then what do you do? Well, there's a formula in that book, 5 a.m. club, 20-20-20, the 20-20-20 formula. First 20 minutes, you exercise. You know, exercise is incredibly, incredibly powerful. By doing sweaty exercise first thing in the morning, you release BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which John Rady at Harvard calls miracle growth for the brain. BDNF actually promotes neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells. BDNF speeds your processing ability. BDNF uh, repairs brain cells that have been damaged by stress. Exercising during that first 20-minute pocket that I call move in the book releases dopamine. We all know now it's the inspirational neurotransmitter. Releases norepinephrine, which pr prom promotes focus. That's why after a workout, you're much more focused. Uh, it releases endorphins and serotonin, the feel-good neurotransmitter. Reduces cortisol, the fear hormone. That's, now it's 520. You've dramatically changed your, your brain's chemistry, the way you're feeling. Next 20 minutes of the 20-20-20 formula, 520 to 540, it's about reflection. A lot of us are very busy in our lives, but let us not confuse busy with effectiveness. Let us not confuse movement with productivity. So 20 minutes from 520 to 540, pray, read study, keep a journal, sit in silence and solitude. I mean, imagine just being much more reflective as you go through the day. So you live the day on your terms, on your values, you know, under what you want, how you want to live. Then the final pocket, 540 to 6, is uh, all about uh, grow. And when you ask, you know, you ask me about the most successful people in the world, these people are monomaniacally curious. These people, you say, oh, you know, I read this book last week. They pull out their phone when you get up to go to the restroom and they order the, the book. <laughs> um, th these people understand that education is inoculation against disruption and the leader who learns the most wins. So final 20 minutes of the 2020 5 a.m. club formula. Is, is grow. You review your battle notes. You read Marcus Aurelius' meditation. You watch, for example, your podcast. You listen to an online course. You do something for 20 minutes to develop your knowledge base. So when you go out in the marketplace as a business person, you deliver more value, but you can also do something that will allow you to develop more self-knowledge. So that is 
the 5 a.m. club morning routine, the 2020-20 formula. I'm going to ask probably an obvious question to this, and, and we'll talk about health a little bit. What does drinking do when you've been drinking the night before to that 2020 opportunity? Well, I think it's actually not an um, obvious question. It's a very intelligent question. Okay. The key to an excellent morning routine is an outstanding pre-sleep ritual. Yep. So now if you're saying, you know, you'd like to have some wine and the next, you know, is, is that wrong? Like you live or any of your, your listeners and viewers from around the world, do what feels right for you. I'm not here to tell anyone what they need to do, but it becomes harder if you've had um, more than just a glass of, of wine. I think it gets harder to wake up early in the morning. Mm-hmm. If someone says, well, yeah, that's a part of my lifestyle and, and I find great value in it. It brings joy. Then I totally, I totally hear them. And I would say maybe you, you do the 5 a.m. club method five times a week, and then you have your, your, you know, your whatever nights. Okay. The second on that was the curiosity part. Can you teach curiosity or is that something that you're born with? Well, I, I, you know, I remember once being in, in a, in a airport and this little kid, and I'm not judging again, we all make our mistakes. I sure have. I, I saw a little kid asking his dad, but daddy, this and daddy, that, that. And, you know, and the father said, why do you ask so many questions? And, and my fear is in that moment, the little kid never asked another question. So I deeply believe we are born curious. Like, I, I know you, you mentioned where you live. If you want to do it, go out to a park, you know, whatever, and just watch some kids w- with their parents. You know, the kids are having fun and watch the kids. And I guarantee you, the kids are in flow state, to use the term of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi University uh, of Chicago, and they're asking questions. So I would say, I would say we are born into curiosity and we get threatened and hoodwinked out of our curiosity to the point where a lot of us think we don't have any curiosity. Like, I can't tell you how many times I'll have, you know, I, there's so many books out there to read, so many courses, so many places to visit. There, the world is such a fascinating place, even with the darkness that we are in. And yet you say to someone, oh, you know, I just read this book that I love. And, and a lot of people really will go, Oh, yeah. And it's not that they're not good people. And it's not that they don't have curiosity. I think it's just been numbed down inside of them. Yeah, it seems like now, I mean, there's, there's, you know, I don't know if it's cultures and even with the media today, a lot of what the world is telling us is not to be curious. It's to believe what you are told in a lot of ways. And, and that's what you believe. Um, I'm not speaking just about what we're in right now, but it seems to be with you know, there's countries that do it to, to people that are curious. Um, yeah, it's, that's an interesting thought. Curiosity is, uh, is a superpower and it doesn't seem to be, uh, at the top of mind for a lot of the big institutions around the world right now. Well, I'd say curiosity is freedom, Chris. Yep. Curious, curious about how much of your promise you can materialize, curious about how you can make your business better curious about what people who think differently from us are like curiosity about the next book you lift up that'll change your life curiosity curious about foods you've never tried curious about how to reinvent your business curiosity 